12. Defense Intelligence Since World War II, the intelligence organization of the Department of Defense and the Armed Services has been subject to a variety of changes which have sought to reduce the independence of the nation's fighting forces by unifying their administration with a view toward promoting a more effective use of resources. This effort began in a grand manner with the creation of the National Military Establishment and the Office of the Secretary of Defense in 1947, and the institution of the Department of Defense two years later. Intelligence was but one common defense function which was greeted by the unification trend. At the end of World War II, the Joint Chiefs of Staff decided to continue the Joint Intelligence Committee created in 1942 as a coordinating mechanism. With the demise of the Office of Strategic Services in 1945, the Joint Chiefs created the Joint Intelligence Group, sometimes referred to as J-2, within its Joint Staff, authorized by the National Security Act of 1947. In 1961, the Joint Intelligence Group was supplanted by the newly created Defense Intelligence Agency, which assumed the role of Principal Coordinator for Intelligence Matters among the Armed Services. Quote, Until 1961, coordination with the civilian side of the Department of Defense was maintained through the Defense Secretary's Assistant for Special Operations, who served as Principal Aide to the Secretary and Deputy Secretary on all matters pertaining to the national intelligence effort. The Office of Assistant for Special Operations rather suddenly disappeared in the aftermath of the Bay of Pigs disaster in 1961. Another arrangement, never publicized, was made for a special assistant to the Defense Secretary to supervise these activities. He represented the Secretary on Special Interdepartmental Intelligence Boards and Committees. End quote. Intelligence coordination matters were given a significant impetus in 1972 when an assistant secretaryship was created to supervise defense intelligence programs through the entire management cycle, from initial research and development through programming, budgeting, and the final process of follow-up evaluation, and to provide the principal point for management and policy coordination with the Director of Central Intelligence, the CIA, and other intelligence officials and agencies outside the Department of Defense. The new Assistant Secretary of Defense, Intelligence, also has management overview responsibilities with regard to the Defense Intelligence Agency and the National Security Administration in terms of coordinating their programs with those of the other Defense Department intelligence functionaries. Established by a departmental directive, DOD 5105.21, Dated August 1, 1961, the Defense Intelligence Agency is responsible for 1. The organization, direction, management, and control of all Department of Defense intelligence resources assigned to or included within the DIA. 2. Review and coordination of those Department of Defense intelligence functions retained by or assigned to the military departments. Overall guidance for the conduct and management of such functions will be developed by the Director DIA for review, approval, and promulgation by the Secretary of Defense. 3. Supervision of the execution of all approved plans, programs, policies, and procedures for intelligence functions not assigned to DIA. 4. Obtaining the maximum economy and efficiency in the allocation and management of Department of Defense intelligence resources. This includes analysis of those DOD intelligence activities and facilities which can be fully integrated or collected with non-DOD intelligence organizations. 5. Responding directly to priority requests levied upon the Defense Intelligence Agency by USIB, United States Intelligence Board. And 6 satisfying the intelligence requirements of the major components of the Department of Defense. The agency was a byproduct of the post-Sputnik missile gap controversy of the late 1950s. Faced with disparate estimates of Soviet missile strength from each of the armed services, which translated into what have been called self-serving budget requests for weapons for defense, 
the United States Intelligence Board created a joint study group in 1959 to study the intelligence-producing agencies. In 1960, this panel returned various recommendations, among which were proposals for the consignment of the Defense Department's to observer rather than member status on the Intelligence Board and the creation of a coordinating defense intelligence agency which would represent the armed services as a member of USIB. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara adopted these proposals. The director of DIA functions as the principal intelligence staff officer to both the Secretary of Defense and the Joint Chiefs of Staff, reporting to the Secretary through the Joint Chiefs. The director is also commander of the Defense Attaché System and chairman of the weekly meetings of the Military Intelligence Board, composed of the chiefs of the four armed services. In addition to a general counsel office, an inspector general unit, and a scientific advisory committee, the Defense Intelligence Agency presently consists of the following components which respond directly to the director, deputy director leadership. Chief of Staff, Deputy for Management and Plans, Policy Development and Coordination, Plans, Operations Management, and Formulation of Requirements for Functional Management Systems. Deputy Director for Intelligence, including responsibility for all source-finished military intelligence, but not scientific and technical intelligence, maintenance of target systems and physical vulnerability research, military capabilities, and current intelligence assessments, reporting, and warning. Deputy Director for Collection, Deputy Director for Scientific and Technical Intelligence, Deputy Director for Estimates, Deputy Director for Attaché and Human Resources, Deputy Director for Support, Support Activities and Administrative Services, Deputy Director for Information Systems, Intelligence Information and Telecommunication Systems, Deputy Director for Personnel, Comptroller, and the Defense Intelligence School, created in 1962 and supervised by a Commandant. Footnote. Earlier organization models for the Defense Intelligence Agency may be found in McCloskey, 1967, pages 92 through 93, Ransom, 1970, page 105, Kirkpatrick, 1973, pages 40 through 41. End footnote. The National Security Agency, an independently organized entity within the Department of Defense, is the product of efforts at unifying and coordinating defense cryptologic and communications security functions. Quote, In the first post-war years, the cryptologic duties of the American Armed Forces reposed in the separate agencies of the Army, the Navy, and the Air Force. The Army, at least, charged its agency with maintaining liaison with the Department of the Navy, Department of the Air Force, and other appropriate agencies for the purpose of coordinating communication security and communication intelligence equipment and procedures. Presumably, the Navy and the Air Force units were similarly charged. This arrangement, which relied on internal desire instead of external direction, prolonged the abuses once hinted at by General Douglas MacArthur's World War II Intelligence Chief, Major General Charles A. Willoughby. To rectify them, and achieve the benefits of centralized control, the Defense Department in 1949 established the Armed Forces Security Agency. The AFSA took over the strategic communications intelligence functions and the coordination responsibilities of the individual agencies. It left them with tactical communications intelligence, which can best be performed near the point of combat and not at a central location, except for basic system solutions and with low-echelon communication security, which differs radically in ground, sea, and air forces. Even in these areas, AFSA backed them up. AFSA drew its personnel from the separate departmental agencies, though it later hired separately and housed itself in their buildings. End quote. The success of the unified approach to cryptology evidenced by the operations of the Armed Forces Security Agency warranted an expansion of that institution to include crypto systems outside of the Defense Department, such as those maintained by state. Accordingly, President Truman promulgated a classified directive creating the National Security Agency on November 4, 1952, 
abolishing the Armed Forces Security Agency and transferring its assets and personnel to the new successor. Such an aura of official secrecy surrounded NSA that no acknowledgement of its existence appeared in the government organization manuals until 1957, when a brief but vague description was offered. In brief, according to one expert, NSA, quote, creates and supervises the cryptography of all U.S. government agencies, end quote. And, quote, it interprets, traffic analyzes, and cryptanalyzes the messages of all other nations, friend as well as foe, end quote. It is the American Black Chamber reincarnated with the most highly sophisticated technology available, an estimated staff of 20,000 employees at its home base, Fort Meade, Maryland, with between 50,000 to 100,000 persons in its service overseas, and an annual budget thought to range between $1 and $1.2 billion. Footnote. Douglas Watson, NSA, America's Vacuum Cleaner of Intelligence. Washington Post, March 2, 1975. End footnote. According to best estimates, the National Security Agency is organized into three operating divisions. The Office of Production, Code and Cipher Breaking, the Office of Communications Security, Code and Cipher Production, and the Office of Research and Development, Digital Computing and Radio Propagation Research, Cryptanalysis, and Development of Communications Equipment, and supporting units for recruiting and hiring, training, and the maintenance of both physical and personnel security. In November 1971, President Nixon directed certain changes in the organization of the intelligence community, among them the creation of a National Cryptologic Command under the director of the National Security Agency. The result of this announcement was the organization of the Central Security Service, comprised of the Army Security Agency, the Naval Security Group, and the U.S. Air Force Security Service, with the NSA director concurrently serving as the chief CSS. Apparently established to consolidate the cryptanalytic activities of the armed services, the official purpose of CSS, as stated in the fiscal year 1973 annual Defense Department report to Congress, is to, quote, provide a unified, more economical, and more effective structure for executing cryptologic and related electronic operations previously conducted under the military departments. The military departments will retain administrative and logistic support responsibilities for the military units involved, but these units will be managed and controlled by the CSS. End quote. Footnote. U.S. Department of Defense, National Security of Realistic Deterrence, page 135. End footnote. The 1971 Intelligence Community Reorganization also called for the consolidation of all Defense Department personnel security investigations into a single Office of Defense Investigations. From this mandate, a departmental directive, DOD 5105.42, dated April 18, 1972, was issued, chartering the Defense Investigative Service. Operational as of October 1st of that year, the service consists of a director, a headquarters establishment, 14 district offices, and various subordinate field offices and resident agencies throughout the United States and Puerto Rico. The service examines allegations of criminal and or subversive behavior attributed to potential and actual Defense Department employees holding sensitive positions. The 1971 reorganization, quote, also directed that a defense map agency be created by combining the now separate mapping, charting, and geodetic organizations of the military services in order to achieve maximum efficiency and economy in production, end quote. The result of this mandate was the establishment of the Defense Mapping Agency on January 1, 1972, under the provisions of the National Security Act of 1947, as amended, with a director responsible to the Secretary of Defense through the Joint Chiefs of Staff. In the aftermath of these unification efforts within the defense establishment, each of the armed services continues to maintain an intelligence organization, 
and their departments control their own intelligence production activities, particularly tactical or combat intelligence affecting their operations, cryptological, mapping, and pertinent personnel security investigation functions having been consolidated for administration as discussed above. An assistant chief of staff for intelligence, G2, has continued with the Army General Staff since World War II. This officer supervised the Army Intelligence Corps, which included both collection and analysis functions, and the Army Security Agency, established September 15, 1945, to execute cryptologic duties. In June 1962, a major reorganization of Army intelligence operations brought about the merger of these two units into the Army Intelligence and Security Branch. Quote, Prior to January 1, 1965, the Military District of Washington and each of the six armies within the United States were responsible for counterintelligence activities throughout their geographic areas and controlled an intelligence corps group which carried on these activities. On January 1, 1965, the seven intelligence corps groups were consolidated into a new major command, U.S. Army Intelligence Corps Command. About two months later, it was redesignated the U.S. Army Intelligence Command. End quote. This command, located at Fort Holabird, Maryland, continues to function as a primary Army intelligence entity under G2. The Army Security Agency appears to have less direct intelligence production significance for G2 in the aftermath of the 1971 reorganization when it was placed under the control of the Chief of the Central Security Service. Other Army agencies, such as the Army Transportation Corps, are capable of contributing an intelligence product should G2 consult them regarding some aspect of their expertise. During the Army's most recent major commitment of forces in Southeast Asia, a combined intelligence organization was maintained in Vietnam. This structure was headed by an Assistant Chief of Staff, Military Assistance Command, Vietnam, J2, who is responsible for exercising general staff supervision over all Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps intelligence activities, as well as serving as Assistant Chief of Staff for Intelligence, G2, to General William Westmoreland, Commanding General, U.S. Army, Vietnam. The Office of Naval Intelligence is currently called the Naval Intelligence Command and continues to report to the Chief of Naval Operations through the Command Support Programs Office. Quote, the field organization for carrying out ONI's missions has three major components. One, naval district intelligence officers under the management control of ONI and operating in the United States and certain outlying areas. Two, intelligence organizations with the forces afloat, which are directly under unit commanders with overall ONI supervision. And three, naval attaches functioning under ONI direction as well as State Department and Defense Intelligence Agency supervisions. District intelligence officers operate primarily in counterintelligence and security fields. The District Intelligence Office, DIO, is directly responsible to the Naval District Commandant, with additional duty in some areas on the staff of the commander of the sea frontier of his district. Civilian agents usually are assigned to the District Intelligence Officers along with naval intelligence officers and the former conduct security and major criminal investigations involving naval personnel or material. With the forces afloat or an overseas basis, flag officers in command of each area, fleet, or task force have staff intelligence sections functioning primarily in the operational or tactical intelligence field. The intelligence officer who heads this staff section works not only for the unit commander, but also performs some collection missions for ONI. Naval attaches, trained by ONI in intelligence and languages, collect naval intelligence for ONI, as well as serve the diplomatic chief at the post to which they are assigned. End quote. While ONI serves certain of its intelligence needs, the Marine Corps, quote, maintains a small intelligence staff in its headquarters and intelligence officers are billeted throughout the Corps, end quote. And these personnel, quote, are concerned primarily with tactical or operational rather than national intelligence, end quote. 
Transferred to the Navy Department for wartime service in 1941, the Coast Guard was returned to the Treasury Department in 1946 and has maintained a very small intelligence unit, quote, mainly concerned with port security, keeping subversive elements out of the merchant marine and off the waterfronts, enforcing Coast Guard laws, and ensuring the internal security of the Coast Guard, end quote. When the United States Air Force became a separate service apart from the Army in 1947, a general staff directorate called the Air Staff was instituted with an Assistant Chief of Staff for Intelligence, ACSI, and sometimes still unofficially referred to as A-2. This officer supervises an immediate office organized into a special advisory group, a brains trust designed to keep the ASCI abreast of scientific, technical, and strategic matters of prime concern to the air arm, a data handling systems group, a policy and programs unit, a resources management component, a collection directorate, and a strategic estimates directorate. The ASCI has also held staff supervision authority of the USAF Security Service, Personnel and Physical Security, and the Aeronautical Chart and Information Center. Aeronautical charts, graphic air target materials, flight information publications and documents, terrain models, maps, evaluated intelligence on air facilities, geodetic and geophysical data, and related cartographic services. Overseas attachés are administered through the Collection Directorate, which at one time included a reconnaissance division, acknowledged to be charged with overseeing the development of the latest spy-in-the-sky equipment, some of it exotic. This entity may have been displaced by the National Reconnaissance Office, an Air Force intelligence agency only recently disclosed to exist, which reportedly operates satellite intelligence programs for the entire intelligence community on a budget estimated at more than $1.5 billion a year. This is Our Hidden History. <laughs>